Hello and welcome to Stealth GTI. I'm Scott and today I'm going to tell you about my Showcase 15 and why you should consider not buying it until you understand a few things. Welcome back and thanks for being here. I've had my Showcase 15 for a couple of years, maybe longer, and there were some disappointments right off the bat, and I'll tell you about those in just a second, but what I will say about the Showcase 15 is that this is probably the shortest lived product that I've ever seen from Yakima. I bought it at the time because it was a brand new model, and I thought for sure it would have the best in aerodynamics and quietness and design, because it was a new design, and then I got it and it disappointed me and then it went away. They discontinued it. And so it makes me wonder if it had a lot of problems. So let me tell you about those problems. Now you may be wondering why I'm doing a review on a box that has been discontinued. Well, if Yakima discontinued the box because of widespread problems, then I think you need to know about them before you buy them on the used market. There might be a glut of them on the used market before too long. So I want you to check out a few things. Now, I told you twice now that the Yakima box, it disappointed me. And so what I discovered from the box is it leaks. Now, no box, no cargo box is guaranteed to be waterproof and rainproof, but most of them are. It's possible for driving rain to slip up under the lips here and get inside and not a lot, but just enough to where something could get wet. But in my case, I discovered my leaks because when the box was sitting still parked in my driveway, I used to have it mounted on a, on a trailer. I think that was where I first used it. And then it was just sitting outside. No uh, driving wind from driving at high speed on the highway or anything. It was just sitting and light rain got into the box. And what I discovered is that the water was leaking around the rivets. So I contacted Yakima, they've got their, we've got your back guarantee, and their answer was to put RTV on the backs of the rivets. And I remember thinking, well, why didn't you do that during assembly? So I looked at the backs of the rivets and they're just not really accessible. So I tried RTVing the outside of the rivets and that just wasn't really, it didn't really work. So I wanted to peel the RTV off and that was when I discovered that I think, I, I, I didn't prove it, but I'm pretty sure these rivets are plastic and that was another disappointment. I don't even know how a plastic rivet works, but there was just something that seemed weak about the rivets. Yakima, I mentioned their we've got your back guarantee. I suppose I could have sent it back and had them fix or replace at their option, but the problem is the customer's on the hook for shipping and this is a freight item and so for me to send this box from Virginia to California to get repaired it was gonna be like a $250 freight charge and there's, there's just no way I'm gonna do that so I decided that what I was gonna do to fix it or mitigate it is more a better word is I had the box wrapped and I think you can maybe see that uh, from from your view here and that basically sealed up all of the rivet spots and and it looks better too because another thing I don't like about or didn't like about my showcase was the gloss finish. Now a lot of fancy uh, cargo boxes have a gloss finish and they look good but what I didn't like was the glare. In my case the box was on a trailer at the time and the glare would hit and just blow right in through my rear view mirror and just blind me. So I can only imagine what it was doing to my fellow drivers on the roof of the car. Sure, I can't see it, but they can. So I decided I wanted a matte finish. And so I had the box wrapped in a matte finish. And that fixed everything. No leaks, no driving rain gets inside ever. And so if they had just managed to seal the boxes, everything would have been okay. My next complaint is the way the lid lifts uh, while the car is in motion. There is an aerodynamic effect here. This is kind of a wing shape, if you will. And so that's gonna create a lift on the lid as the car drives at high speed. And it lifts the box here, right? Now this is 
really, really small potatoes. There's how much that lift is, right? And again, this is really small, but at the back, it would lift right off of the base and then expose um, the back side of the box, the, the lip. Uh, I'll flash a picture because I don't, I don't have anything here with me. And so what I did to mitigate that is I got a piece of angle aluminum, cut it to a length. I'd only, I only need about two or three inches and then I glued it back here to create a lip. And so the lip keeps the box from lifting up higher than the base. It does make it a little inconvenient to open, but that fixed my problem back here. So look how much motion is back here. And that happens as a result of lift from the aerodynamics as well. And it does lift to there every single time I drive the car. So those are the bad things about the box. I guess you might call them ugly, but they're only ugly if you don't know about them. If you know about these problems, then they're easily fixed. Just know that you might have to do this if you buy one of these used on the market and use that knowledge to your advantage when you're, when you're negotiating a price. I paid way too much for this box in my opinion, but how was anybody to know it was a new product, right? And I just jumped on that. I can't really call it a bandwagon because I don't know anybody else that did it, but uh, you know, I jumped on it. I was kind of anxious about getting my very first rooftop cargo box and I wanted it to be a good one. And it was until it got wet. As far as wind goes, the, the wind I suppose is, is average. It's not terribly noisy. It's, it makes noise that I would expect an object on my roof to make. So I'm not concerned about the noise. It doesn't whistle or anything, howl or anything terrible. It's just wind noise. I don't think it's too terrible at all. So let me show you the opening of this. This latch is something else that Yakima appears to have discontinued. And I don't think I've seen this on their newer boxes. And so I personally haven't had a problem with it, but I could see how it might have its shortcomings. It's not, oh, I can't explain. I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up for you and let you check it out. The key has to remain inserted when the box is open. Now, because of my hook in the back, I have to kind of shimmy it. So what I do is I push it that way and then it opens right up. This is 15 cubic feet of storage and I think it's well appointed. It is uh, a 14 inches tall. I believe that is an exterior dimension. And then on the inside, it is of course a little bit shorter. And some of that is because of the, the molding pieces that are in here. This here, that's probably about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. That takes away from the overall height on the inside, as does these clamps. If you, you know, if you need to put something big inside of here, you're not going to have 14 inches of clearance inside, especially, uh, especially at the front. But one of the things I have noticed that I kind of like about these clamps, now here, I'm still geared up from a, a recent road trip. I had a spare tire for my trailer up here. And that's a spare tire for my car. And then I have some fluids here. And the thing that I find interesting about the way these things are in here is this box. And I don't remember where I got it. So I'll just show you that name there, Big Ant. Anyway, look up that name. See if you can find it. It is the perfect size for fitting right here between these, between these two rails. And then on top of that, um, it can't slide forward. And so my concern, you know, I'm not using the tie downs to hold this stuff down. And so what I did is I just secured it to each other. The rubber and the tire helps prevent it from slipping around too much. And then this here acts as a brake at the front. And so nothing will slide forward when I slam on the brakes. And believe me, I was, I had all this stuff up here when I did the uh, very recent back of the dragon sport drive and we did some pretty aggressive driving and none of this stuff moved at all. Now with my mitigation tactic back here, closing the box is a little trickier. So what I have to do is bring it down almost to closed and then I'll walk around back here, just push that up in there to get it to clear my lip, my angle aluminum lip. And that's all there is to it. 
I hate to give it a bad review, and maybe I'm not. I'm just telling you about the shortcomings that I've had with the box. And if Yakima canceled the box so quickly, it makes me wonder if there was more people with problems with it. I, I really don't know. Or maybe they saw some styling trends. Uh, I like the new uh, breed of boxes, both from Thule and Yakima, that sit lower on the crossbar. They, they have a cutout at the bottom that, that brings the whole thing down. And of course, that makes a, a larger intrusion inside the box, which is gonna cut down on your interior height. But wow, they look good. They are good looking boxes. I'm starting to babble about my box a little too much. Uh, keep these things in mind if you are purchasing one of these from the internet, eBay, used seller, whatever. If they're selling it cheap, say $200 or less, I would jump all over one of these for $200. $300, yeah, probably. $400, now you're getting up in that region where I probably wouldn't buy it for $400 knowing the problems that it might have. I hope you've found this helpful. As always, I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Take care.